Good morning. This is the Bethlehem News Broadcasting Service on this 25th day of December. I am Michelle Assetain, bringing you news from the province of Judea. The news headlines this morning. There is rising speculation as to the identity of the baby born in a stable. There are claims that he is the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace and even God himself. The new star continues to start shine over Bethlehem. Are the two connected? And as the child attracts so much attention from her visitors all over the world, we ask why is he so important and what does Herod have against him? Our religious affairs correspondent, Rita Attractor-Story, has been to talking to eyewitnesses. Rita. Thank you, Michelle. On the streets of Bethlehem, there is much talk of this new baby. I've spoken to several people about the events surrounding his birth. Quite interesting insights. Remember, these are eyewitness accounts, people who were there. I wanted to speak to the family first. So here is Joseph, the baby's dad. Or is he? I'd like to tell you about Mary, my wife-to-be, and I think the world of her. But then Mary came to me and said that she was pregnant. And I thought, what? I was so confused. I thought, I don't understand this. If people realise and find this out, they possibly think that she's an adulteress. And under the law of Moses, she could be stoned to death. I was really, really confused. I didn't know what to do. I thought, well, maybe later on I can divorce her. I just didn't know what to do. Why would this happen like this? I know Mary. This isn't Mary. That's not the way she is. But later on, while I was sleeping, I had a dream, a vision. And this angel came to me and said to me, Joseph, do not worry and do not be afraid, for God has given Mary a child through the power of the Holy Spirit. It kind of took away my fears and made me believe that possibly something incredible was happening here. So I decided to stay with Mary. It was incredible what happened. It was so bizarre, but so real at the same time. And I was still trying to figure everything out, what was going on. But eventually after, Jesus was born. And according to the law, Mary and I had to go to the temple to offer a sacrifice. And when we were there, a man called Simeon came and he took Jesus in his arms. And he began to praise God. And he said things like this. This child is a child that is going to bring a revelation of righteousness. This child would divide people's hearts. He's going to be the light in a dark world. When Marion and I heard Simeon say this, it suddenly dawned on us that this little boy that we had, Jesus, was going to be a man that was going to change the world. So he's definitely not Joseph's son, but is he the son of God? I spoke to his young mother Mary, who claims to still be a virgin. I was really scared. Why would God choose me? Who am I? I was only a child about to get married. This shouldn't and couldn't be happening. What would Joseph say? But God had chosen me, and something in me found peace in that. It's amazing to think that Almighty God knows who I am and knows I can do this. I knew it would be all right. I found myself saying, let it be to me according to your word, and then found myself worshipping God and thanking him for everything. As the baby grew inside me, I found a love I had never known before. I so loved him and also felt his love for me too. It was almost as if he was carrying me and not the other way around. And now I know why. This child was going to be carry the sin of the whole world. This child was going to bring life to all humankind. This child 
was going to become the greatest rescue mission of all time. This child was and is love. And through all the difficult years, I found that God has always been faithful to me. There was something really amazing about that young girl. I was struck by her total trust in God. Is what she says true? Could this baby be God's son? All throughout our scriptures, there have been prophecies of a child being born. So I thought I would speak to one of the prophets. He declined to give his name. He said he wanted to point us to God, not to himself. Do you know it's exhausting being a prophet? God keeps telling me things. And it's not always a voice. Sometimes it's a picture. Sometimes a feeling. I don't know whether it's from God sometimes or whether it's just me. But lately the themes are different. The theme is darkness to light. War turning to peace. And because the birth of a child in Bethlehem. I wasn't sure where the child was going to be. A conquering king maybe. A great hero. A humble servant. It was so confusing. Then I had a word from God. Behold, a virgin with a child is to bear a son. And she will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. Well, I'll tell you this, I wasn't expecting a baby to be born of a poor family in a shack. But God is God. And God doesn't think like me or anyone else. I think God knows what he's talking about. And he knows what he's going to do. I'm just his servant. I'm just here to proclaim what he's told me. I have to say, everything he says does come to pass. Not straight away, maybe. Maybe a few years, sometimes hundreds. So I know this baby is going to make a difference. I know this baby is what the world needs. This baby is going to be a wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father. He's going to be the Prince of Peace. So God said so, and I found God always to be true to his word. But one thing saddens me as a prophet, is although I proclaim the word of God, there are not many that believe it. What struck me was God is always true to his word, he said. And everything in our scriptures does point to this child being what the prophet said. So the birth is in line with the ancient prophets. What about the views of ordinary people? I managed to catch up with one of the shepherds working in the hills who said they were visited by angels. I know we wouldn't normally take what they say into account, but I think you need to hear what he has to say. At first, I was terrified. I thought it was the end of the world. I was blinded by this light. I was so afraid. Then the angel spoke. Do not be afraid. And I wasn't. I wasn't even afraid. Even when there was this amazing spectacle of hundreds of angels all singing praises to God, the fear had gone. I stood there, open-mouthed. It was as if it was the most important day of my life. And it was. I was never the same again. The angel went, but the light seemed to hang around. It was as if it was inside of me, inside of all of us. We knew we had to go straight to Bethlehem to see the saviour of the world, this baby. So we did. He was so small, lying in the feeding trough on the bed of straw, but there was something about him that I wanted to be near him, 
in him I found this peace which I cannot describe I had to tell everybody and on that night I found what I had been looking for all of my life I was never the same again I was never the same again. There is definitely something about this baby and it seems to not matter who you are, rich or poor. So from the low life to the high life, I managed to get to talk to King Herod himself. King Herod is known to be angry about all the propaganda surrounding this child. Here's what he said. I tried my hardest to make sure that that boy was not allowed to live. I called all the leading priests and the teachers of the law together and told them to find out where he was going to be born. I met a group of stargazers from the east. They travelled all that way just to meet him. I pretended that I wanted to go and worship him too. And would they come and tell me exactly where he was? But the double crossers cheated and didn't come back. In my anger, I told my soldiers to go and kill all the boys of two and under. That, I felt sure, would solve the problem. There can only be one king. I am king and I alone. But he escaped. Perhaps there is something in this thing of theirs after all. I tried my hardest to kill that boy, but it seems that when their God says something will happen, then it will happen, despite my best attempts to stop it. Am I not then the all-powerful one? So even great King Herod couldn't destroy this little boy. Attention is hotting up. Bethlehem is packed full at the moment and there is just nowhere to stay. So I spoke to the innkeeper who put this family up in his stable. A lovely baby boy it was. Um, she laid him down in one of the hollows that the animals usually feed from. Of course it had clean straw in it. I did do that. Um, and do you know what? There was something about that baby. He cried like other babies and he looked like other babies, but there was something important about him. Even the animals knew they were so placid and calm. They, it was so peaceful somehow. That was until everyone else started turning up. This baby is certainly attracting a lot of visitors. And they seem to be coming from all over the world. And this star that's been in the sky for the last few weeks seems to be significant. I spoke to a Magi, an astronomer from the East. She had travelled for weeks to get here just to see the baby. When we saw the star we were so excited. We knew exactly what it was and we knew where it would lead us. Well not exactly where but we knew to whom it would lead us. You see, it was in our scriptures. We followed it for many, many days as far as Jerusalem, where we met with King Herod. Not a very nice man, and I didn't trust him one bit. He wanted to know what we were doing and where, why we were following this star. We told him, of course, and then he wanted to, us to report back to him so he could come to this special place too. We ignored that request. Anyway, the star eventually led us to Bethlehem. Strange that an insignificant little town like Bethlehem had been chosen. But we knew in our hearts that we were in the right place. But a stable? Why was the king of kings not born in a palace? But then nothing was expected about this child. Just look at the gifts we gave. Gold for a king, frankincense, a perfume for worship, myrrh, used for anointing dead people. Not the sort of gifts you'd give to a baby. But we followed the star and found this very special king who was going to save the world and reign forever.
So that star has been marking the place where the baby was to be born and brought these wise people all the way to Bethlehem. Are their gifts prophetic? As she said, they're strange gifts for a baby, gifts for a king, for worship, for the dead. What does it mean? I can't help thinking, what if? What if this baby really is who these eyewitnesses say he is? This is Rita, a tractor story. Bethlehem, Judea. Thank you, Rita. Indeed, eyewitness accounts seem to concur. Everything points to this child being the saviour we've been waiting for. If he is, that is certainly good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And that's what we need in times like these. What a nice change to have some good news to end our programme with. Food for thought on this 25th day of December. Goodbye from me, Michelle Assetane and from the news team.